Welcome to The Truth About Taxes and Retirement. This podcast is brought to you by SavingYouTaxes.com and hosted by J. Barry Watts. As an advanced tax strategist and enrolled agent federally licensed by the IRS, Barry is uniquely qualified to go deeper into the Internal Revenue Code than most accountants. He understands and interprets its provisions explaining how they'll help you reduce income taxes you owe so you can direct that previously wasted tax money into tax-free accounts that you can enjoy in your retirement years. Now, on today's episode. If you had a valuable liquid Would you carry it in a bucket that had holes in it? On today's episode of The Truth About Taxes and Retirement, we're going to talk about how practically everyone holds their financial assets in a container that is leaking. Those leaks are costly. They take away years from our retirement because your money has effectively spilled out. And the result is that you run out of money more quickly, jeopardizing not only how long your retirement income lasts, but the legacy that you leave to your heirs as well. I'm Barry Watts, the host of The Truth About Taxes and Retirement, here with my co-host, Eric Burleson. Hello, Eric. Good morning. Welcome. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you. You you were up late last night watching the election results come in. I was. But you look bright-eyed and chipper this morning. Well, it's, I don't feel it, but. <laughs> well, we're going to give you some bright-eyed, chipper things to think about today. Going to stretch your brain and your imagination because in today's podcast, what I'm going to I want you to do is to go into your imagination and find that drawing board in your mind. Now, maybe it's a whiteboard that comes up in your mind. You know, when I was in school, whiteboards didn't exist and we had blackboards and chalk. Uh, So whatever comes to your mind is fine, but I want you to go into your mind today and draw a picture. And I think if you'll do that, it will help you to understand the concepts that we are teaching. You're going to be able to do that for me today, Eric? Of course. Okay. Well, very good. Here's the picture I want you to draw. I want you to draw a picture in your mind of a bucket, just a simple bucket. And I want you to pretend for a moment that all of your money your retirement accounts, your stock, your mutual funds, your CDs, your bank, everything, all of your money is in that one bucket. Can you do that for me? Dear Liza. I know. (laughs) I know in your case, that'd be a really big bucket. Right. So uh, I want you to draw this picture of the bucket in your mind. Now, here's the next thing I want you to do. Uh, Above that bucket, I want you to draw a faucet. So what you're beginning to see in your mind is a bucket that's setting underneath a faucet. Uh, In my yard at home, I've got one of those faucets sticks straight up out of the ground. It's got a big red handle on top of it. And you reach over and it looks like a lever and you just kind of lever it up and suddenly it shoots water everywhere. Have you got one of those? I do. All right. Well, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And hopefully the listeners to our podcast can imagine that in their mind too. So we've got a bucket setting under a faucet like that. And the faucet, of course, would be used to fill the bucket. So financially speaking, the way you get more money into your bucket is through interest, dividends, and capital gains that are produced by the faucet, and they run out of the faucet into the bucket. Eric, can you see in your mind a bucket full of money with a faucet filling it on up to the top? Yes, I can see it. Well, perfect. That's exactly (laughs) what I wanted you to be able to say, and I hope our listeners see it as well. Now, here's the thing that you've got to think about. When you encounter people in the financial services industry, whether they're brokers or registered representatives or investment representatives or certified financial planners or insurance agents, all of those kinds of people, when you encounter those kinds of people, they all tell you how they have the best faucet in the business. Effectively, what they say is, well, you know, you're doing pretty good where you're at, but you know, if you were using our faucet to fill your bucket, our faucet's just a little bit better and it would fill your bucket up a little bit more. And they'll tell you about how their faucets are made from superior materials or the engineers who design their faucets are just smarter than the other engineers who design the other guy's faucet or how their faucet makers are a little smarter than the ones that work at the other faucet making firm. The whole idea is focus on the faucet and whoever you're talking to will tell you that their faucet is the best faucet. Right. Have you ever run into that kind of experience, Eric? Yeah, they. It, you see that all the time. People are talking about how their returns are better than, than, the, than the next guy. 
Yeah, right? returns, 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 it's returns. It's all about returns, and and people often think, well, that's what I've got to I've got to be watching for is returns. Well, Eric, can I clue you in on something here? That whole line of thinking is a whole bunch of bunk. You do know what bunk is, don't you? Yes. <laughs> it reminds me of the guy who went to South America and was uh, touring around. He was uh, worked for the State Department here, I think, in agricultural development or something. And so he went to some South American country and he was back with the tribal people somewhere. And uh, when he got out of the Jeep where they'd taken him back into the land, uh, the people came up to him and and uh, they greeted him and he began to speak to them and they started yelling, Hoya, 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 Hoya. <laughs> And he was, you know, he didn't know what that meant, but he I thought it was pretty good. It's kind of exciting. And they put him back in the Jeep and they took him somewhere else. And they parked him with in, in front of all these tribal people and the people got out and they greeted him and he started to speak and they yelled, hoya, 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 hoya. And uh, he thought, man, I love speaking to these South American folks. They are enthusiastic about what I have to say. And so he got in a Jeep and he went to the third place. It was a farm he was going to visit. And as he got out of the farm, his driver pointed to the ground and said, hey, be careful. Don't step in the Hoya. (laughs) So that's (laughs) that's an old one is what that is. So here's the truth about those faucets. When people try to tell you they have the best faucet, it's, well, it's Hoya. It's Hoya. In any given year, a company may indeed have the highest and best performing investment manager. But the next year, they'll be surpassed by somebody new and different. Rarely, very rarely, does an investment manager perform at the top of his peers for more than one year. And studies have shown that on a consistent basis over time, about 95% of managers don't beat the S&P 500. Now, we use the S&P 500 to measure the stock market. So when we talk about the stock market, the words stock market and S&P 500 are interchangeable. By the way, Eric, do you know how many stocks are in the S&P 500? A little over 500. Actually, there are 503. Right. See, th- this whole gig is just meant to confuse <laughs> your brain because right. silly me, I would have called it the S&P 503. But no, it's the S&P 500, which has 503 stocks in it. So there's about 5% of people who do beat the S&P 500 in any given year, managers who beat the S&P 500. But the problem is the 5% who beat it this year will not be the 5% who beat it next year. They'll be replaced by somebody else. So it's very, very difficult on a consistent basis to beat the index. And that's why you have people like uh, John Bogle, who founded Vanguard, people like Warren Buffett talking about just buy the index and quit trying to outsmart the markets. And in a general sense, we believe that that concept is true. Uh, We use in, in our advisory practice an indexing sort of method. And so the big message to come out of this is that those people who are manufacturing faucets telling you their faucet will fill the bucket better, all the data says that simply is not true. It's a bunch of Hoya. Yeah. You know, what's funny working for a Fortune 500 company, watching my colleagues who would trade their stock portfolio within the mutual fund options that they had within their 401k. It was always interesting to to have water cooler talk about this because they would look at the performance of, of the previous year, and then they would decide to move their money to the one that performed better that last year, not understanding that that was just one year right? And it's likely that 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 portfolio isn't going to have the same, isn't going to, the trend is not going to repeat itself. That's kind of like driving down the road by looking at the rear view mirror of your car. Are you pretty good at backing up? Or another, another good analogy is, have you ever been in a traffic full lanes? Yeah, this morning there was like a tractor and a, a, a trailer loaded with two pigs and a goat that kept me from getting work. It took me a whole 18 minutes to get to the office. But, but you've been in one before where you've got multiple lanes. and, uh, and then, Boston during the big dig. And then you, your, your lane is not moving, right? But yeah. the one next to it suddenly starts to go. Yeah, so you and move so over you, to that lane. So then you move over to that lane just to find that it stops. And then the lane that you were just in starts going. Exactly. And that's what happens with some of these, uh, you know, the money managers and, and the mutual funds that they're managing, oftentimes they may have a great year, but eh, next year, it's, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to have a great year the next year. So that, and that's really the whole point. So here's what we like to guide investors to do. Instead of fo- focusing on the faucet and where they can get the best return, which intuitively it seems like that'd be the right thing to do. Instead of focusing on that, we want to focus on the bucket 
Now, you remember that bucket that you've got on your faucet? Can you see it in your mind? Yes. All right. Here's what I want you to see in that bucket. I want you to see a bucket that has four big holes in it. Two holes on one side of the bucket and two holes on the other side of the bucket so that whatever you're putting up into the top of the bucket through the faucet is just running out as fast as it goes in there. And how, how good does your faucet have to be to fill a bucket that has huge holes in the side of it? Yeah, you've got to have a, a really powerful faucet. Yeah, that, it, it can't be done. It can't be done is the point. And so since all of your retirement money and all of your other assets are in this one bucket, the one thing that you can do that is more important than selecting a faucet is actually filling or repairing the holes in the bucket, healing the holes up in that bucket so they don't leak anymore. And if you'll get those holes filled so they don't leak anymore, then there are a lot of faucets out there that you can select that would do an adequate job of filling your bucket. So what I want us to do now is I want us to think about those holes in your bucket. Get them back in your mind so that you can see those holes. They're all about the same size. There's four of them, two on each side of the bucket. Now let's put labels on those holes in the bucket. The first holes, I want you to put the label on it that says taxes, because one of the greatest financial leaks that you have is in the form of taxation. The second hole that I want you to see on the side of a bucket is fees. People are generally paying between two and 300% more in fees than they actually realize they're paying. The third hole that I want you to see that's leaking money out of your bucket is market risk. And there's just no reason anymore to lose double digits when the market goes down in a given day or over a period of time. To feel like you have to ride with the market up and down, that's just an old way of thinking that is no longer true or accurate when it comes to retiring and protecting your investment assets. And the fourth and final hole that I want you to see is healthcare cost. That's a big hole for everybody. But if you'll start now, there are things you can do to protect yourself from healthcare cost leakage as well. So see the buckets in your mind, see the holes inside of the buckets, in the sides of the buckets with the labels on those particular holes, taxes, fees, market risk, and healthcare costs. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to fill in those holes. So let's begin with taxes first right now. Depending on what state you live in, the combined federal and state tax bracket you're in probably represents about one third, approximately 30%, unless you live out on the left coast in California, and then it can go much higher than that, uh, almost all the way to 50%. So out of every dollar that comes in for the average person, about $1 gets set aside and leaked out of their bucket in the form of taxes. And that's only going to get worse. The federal government's Congressional Budget Office estimates that the future of the highest tax brackets will be more than 80% and that nearly everybody will be north of 50% in order to pay just the interest on the federal debt, not to pay down the debt, but just to pay the interest alone. Now, the Comptroller General of the United States says that tax rates have to double, so it's a foregone conclusion that taxes are going to be higher in the future. And we had something kind of happen last night. It hasn't really been labeled official yet, but it also is going to speak to these tax rates. And Eric, since you are an elected official serving in the Missouri State Senate, I'm going to allow you to be our political commentator for a minute <laughs> and just talk about what occurred last night and how that's going well, to Im impact this hole in yeah. the bucket. We don't know yet, but it appears that that we may have a shift in the executive branch. And if uh, Joe Biden it becomes the president, as He's made it very clear, even he will raise taxes. And so um, even if he doesn't, the Trump tax cuts are set to expire. And so people are going to experience increases in their taxes. When do those Trump tax cuts expire? I believe at the end of 2025. Yeah, uh, that's that's correct, I, I think. Uh, and assuming we do have a Biden win, which right now the vote's still out and we won't know for a couple of more days. Uh, if we have a Biden win, the Trump tax cuts are just going to be rolled back more quickly is what's likely to happen. And here's why that's a problem for you and for everybody who's been putting money away in their 401k and saving into IRAs and so forth. For all your working years, you have dutifully made deposits into your tax deferred retirement savings account. And everything you've had held out of your paycheck for a contribution has given you a deduction at today's tax rate. But the problem is the tax bracket that you've gotten is less than the additional tax that you're going to pay in the future. So you've essentially been played 
for all these years, you've been saving and getting a tax deduction at historically low rates. And now when you retire, you're going to take that money out of your tax deferred account and pay ordinary income tax on it at even higher, ever higher rates. Uh, we're told rates that will be north of 60 and in some cases north of 80 percent. So not only are you going to pay higher rates on all that money coming out of your retirement accounts, but along with those higher taxes will come increased taxation on your social security income. By the way, one of Biden's uh, principal accomplishments in his previous years in the Senate was he was a, a sponsor of a bill that started taxation on social security. And in addition to that, it not only will you have more tax on your social security, but you will have higher premiums on your Medicare and higher costs on your prescription drug program all because you're going to be in a higher tax bracket at that time. Now, Eric, I feel the need to stop here because we talked a little bit about politics and just say this. Indeed, I think the election results from last night, assuming they come to bear as it looks like they are, and we have a switch in the executive branch, uh, everything we've said about that is accurate. But you need to realize that this really isn't a Republican thing or a Democrat thing, because all of them from every party have spent like drunken sailors for so long. Right. And every every dollar spent is just a future tax. That's exactly right. And we've just been kicking the can down the road, kicking the can down the road, kicking the can down the road. And down home, my grandma would say, someday you're going to have to pay the piper. Right. And we'd like to blame that on whatever political party we're a part of. We want to blame it on the other side. But it's just simple math that isn't driven by political party. It's driven by poor financial thinking on the parts of elected officials. And I hope when you're in the seat punching the yes or no button that you think smarter than these other guys. <laughs> I like to think that I, I, I do. Well, yeah. that's your reputation. And, and, well, and in Missouri, the good thing, and not to go off on a, too much of a tan tangent, but Missouri has got circuit breakers in place that stop elected officials from overspending and it would be god nice bless if, mel, mel hancock right because the hancock amendment and if congress had that we probably wouldn't have some of this potential problem that's that we're going to be facing at some point yes so all of this is driven uh, this conversation around this hole in your bucket for taxes now uh we need to heal up that hole and what you need to know eric is it's totally possible or possible to totally heal the hole in the bucket so that the hole no longer exists. It's going to be a little bit painful to do that because you're going to have to pay some tax now to do it, but it is possible to get those taxes cleansed from your finances so that you're in the 0% tax bracket. And then that tax hole will be healed up totally and you won't be leaking money from that hole in your bucket. And if by chance you're someone who can't have the hole totally healed, and there are some reasons about how your income works that some people can't totally eliminate that tax, well, then you can reduce the size of the hole so it's a smaller leak, say a 10% or a 15% leak instead of a 30% leak, and that is a win as well. So the goal is to make this hole as small as possible or to repair it entirely so that you no longer have a tax hole in your bucket. So look at your bucket. You see where it had all the holes in it? Well, notice one of those holes now has been healed up and it's totally sealed off. So now we're only leaking in three spots. Let's go and heal the second hole in the bucket. And the second hole in your bucket is going to be the fee hole, F-E-E, -E, the cost and expenses and how your investments are managed. Now, most people know that they pay fees, but they don't have a really clear idea of what they pay in fees. It's not unusual to find investment where the total fees charged are between two and a half and 4%. I even had a case a couple of years back where they were paying over 5% per year in annual fees. That's more than 50 times what it costs to own the S&P 500. Yeah. Or even we had a, we're working with a client that has, has a hedge fund oh. and they're paying, they're paying a lot higher fees. I'd forgotten about that. And not getting near the performance that you would expect. The, in that particular hedge fund, do you remember what their fees were? I believe it was 20% of any gains. Yeah, yeah. Well, and he had a percent every year too, didn't he? Plus 20% right. of every gain? Or, or it was 2% a year plus 20%. Yes. Yes, right. um, so so he was paying 2% a year. And then if he gained 10%, well, he really only gained eight because another 2% went to the hedge fund manager. Right. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that, but we do have a case that we're working right now that's that way. So that's a pretty big hole in your bucket. And that's probably why we have that person coming to see us now, because his bucket was uh, the, the, the level of money in his bucket was just shrinking. 
going down and down and down. And so what we want to do is help people learn how to repair the whole. And through careful investment selection and being aware of the costs that you're paying, we can totally, I'm sorry, we can't totally close off this hole so that you have no fees. Because you see, the investment management companies couldn't stay in business. In fact, I couldn't bring you this podcast if there were no fees involved anywhere ever. There's always going to be some fees involved, but you have to be aware of them. And you can reduce the total fees you pay down to an average of about one and a half percent across the board on everything. And so that should be sort of a benchmark goal that you strive for. So now what you've done is you've taken a great big hole, which in the case of the client you mentioned was over 20% of his gains were leaking out. I had the client who had 5% of his gains leaking out. Uh, We frequently see two and a half to 4% leaking out. We've taken the size of that hole down to only one and a half percent. Go ahead. Sometimes people make foolish mistakes with their 401k funds when they move money between, as I, as I was talking, alluding to earlier, when, when people see the performance and they shift lanes, if you will, they say, well, I'm going to, I'm going to jump into this fund because it had great performance last year. And they don't know or don't realize that every time they move their money, some of those mutual funds have front, they're, they have front end loads. So they're, they're paying 5% sometimes in fees just to move it from one fund to another. And invariably, when I'll call that to someone's attention and, and say, did you know when you moved this money into this fund that you got charged 5% right off the top, they'll usually say, no, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And I think it's because people in the advisory community are embarrassed by that, and perhaps they should be. And they feel like it'll be a stumbling block to the transaction they're trying to affect. So they may just uh, mention it quickly, casually, and quietly, and uh, go on. And that's one of the reasons we write the numbers up on the board, so everybody gets to see them. Everybody gets to know what their fees are in a clear and compelling way. Full disclosure. It's no secret. Everybody knows in the investment business there are fees being charged. So just be clear yeah, about what those on, fees just are. Just be, be honest about it. And limit about those front. fees so that the hole in the bucket goes from being a gaping hole that money is gushing out of and turn it into a little bitty leakage that's just kind of trickling out. That's what we're trying to do. So look at that uh, bucket. It had four big holes in it. Now we've we've healed one of the holes totally. The other hole we've healed most of it over and filled most of it in. It's got just a little bitty leak in the side of it. Now, the third hole that we're going to address is market risk, market risk. You know, that's where when the stock market gets bad news and goes down 40 percent, your account goes down 40 percent with it. Have you ever seen that kind of thing happen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As late as uh, recently, most recently, that happened back in March of this very year. Yeah. It, it, and it, and it will happen again. And it happened in 2008 and it happened in 2000, 2001 and 2002. And so this happens over and over and over, but here's what you need to know, Eric, that hole can be healed entirely. Now it's beyond the scope of this podcast uh, today to really get into how that healing occurs or, or filling in that hole occurs, but there are investment vehicles that you can use that will totally eliminate downside market risk so that when the stock market loses money, your account doesn't lose a dime. And sometimes we actually use vehicles like that. Uh, And when you do that, if the market goes down, you don't lose any money. And so what that means is you never waste any time trying to earn that money back. Uh, On average, down like 40%. Do you know off the top of your head, Eric, how long it takes for someone to come back and get back to where they were before the market started down? Yeah, it can, it can take years. It can take years. I know that um, after the 2008 um, market downturn, it took almost eight years to return for, for, for the market to return back to the, to the level that, that it was prior to the downturn. The average recovery time is about six years. So if you spend a year with the market going down and you spend six years recovering, you're in seven years deep. In fact, because we had negative markets in 2000, 2001, 2002, and 2008, and you had to spend the time going down and the time coming back. If you actually looked at a chart of the S&P 500, which is the stock market as we measure it, you would find that uh, from January 1, 2000, that's Y2K for those of you who remember it, from January 1, 2000 until 2013, Your money actually didn't earn anything, not a penny. You spent all your time going down and waiting on it to come back up, going down, waiting on it to come back up. And it was 2013 before you broke above 
where you were on January 1, 2000. That just boggles my mind. 13 years not making anything on your investments. You know, the thing that confuses people, though, is they'll say, well, now, wait a minute. My account went up over those 13 years. And indeed, it did. Probably because you're putting money into That's it. That's exactly right. They were contributing to the account. So they were seeing the account increase over that 13 years, but it wasn't their money that was growing. It was just additional money that they were putting or, into. Or they were the experiencing the benefit of dollar cost averaging. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing. So there is available a mechanism that will totally protect you from market loss by healing over that hole in your bucket. And we don't always recommend a 0% loss type of investment strategy. And there are some reasons that it doesn't fit in every situation. Sometimes we advise a strategy that just minimizes risk so that when the stock market goes down 14% or whether it goes down 40%, your investment strategy will limit the losses to ah, somewhere in the neighborhood of 6% of your portfolio. I like to say we've put a circuit breaker uh, like you've got the breaker box in the utility room at your house. We put a breaker on it. So when the wires get too hot because we're having a market meltdown, the breaker trips and then it protects your portfolio from there on. And so when that happens, we haven't really uh, totally eliminated the market risk hole, but we've minimized the hole uh, so that the flow from that hole is down to a trickle. And so now look at your bucket. You remember it in your mind? You haven't lost that bucket, have you? No. Nope. Remember it's sitting there it's with a big right faucet there. on top of it? Now the, the bucket has got one hole that totally is healed over. It's got a fee hole that's still got a little trickle of leakage out of it. It's got the market risk hole and the market risk hole can be totally healed over or we could design it so that it has just a little trickle. And there are reasons that sometimes we'll do one or the other. And that brings us to only one gaping hole left. And what is that gaping hole, Eric? Well, uh, the risk of, of what might happen with, with your health. Yes, it's medical care and the expense of medical care, specifically long-term care because that can bankrupt a couple. So I want you to imagine that you've got enough money saved up to retire. You're all kind of going along fat, dumb, and happy. It's a good life. And then one of you gets sick and incurs expenses that are beyond what your Medicare is going to pay for. And you need special treatments and special therapies and there are special costs that the government won't pay for. So you write a check for them because you want to heal yourself. And then that doesn't work. And you find yourself entering into some kind of an extended care kind of program. And suddenly the money that you've saved in your account is diminishing. Barry, we've, in Missouri, that is one of the biggest expenses for the for the government for the state is is the expense of Medicaid and long term care, and paying for individuals who need long term care. And what's sad to see is that so many people get get to that point, and then they then they they go through that the method of spending down and trying to get to the point where they where the state and the government picks up that tab because it truly is. Uh, something that can be a catastrophe financially for a family. So you're saying that the state of Missouri has a big hole in their bucket as well. I am saying, yes, that is the case. It's a huge hole. As and I've it's a growing expense. And it seems to be uh, something that we're, it, it, honestly, it eats up almost every new dollar of growth is going into funding the, the growth of Medicaid and, um, and healthcare spending. Well, Long-term doesn't sound like that'll work. No, at some point, some point, um, it's some things will have to change. Well, you know, you alluded to the fact that people actually try to spend down their assets so they can go on on government Medicaid. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, you know, Medicaid is a form of welfare, and uh, welfare is uh, where I grew up in the hardworking, independent Missouri Ozarks. Welfare was kind of a bad word. Uh, it's not anymore, by the way. People are lined up. It seems like to get on it. But the point is, uh, people have worked all of their life to accumulate and acquire and been independent. Uh, only to spend the end of their life, perhaps living on uh, in a government nursing home, for right. lack of better words. And I don't think they thought through that carefully. I don't think that's really what they intended to do. But sometimes they're forced to. And the reason they're forced to is because let's say spouse number one has gotten sick and has spent all the money so that spouse number two, when spouse number one dies, the husband dies, the wife doesn't have any of the nest egg left. All she's got left is the social security to live on. So when she needs care, she's going to have to fall on to Medicaid or government programs to pay for that kind of care. About 70% of people actually wind up needing long-term care. 
And while everybody wants to receive that at home, here's some interesting math. If you just do $20 an hour times 24 hours a day times 365 days a year, a $20 an hour aid at your home to help you when you need care is $175,000 a year. That is a big hole in your financial bucket. Yeah, that's something that a lot of people are not planning for. Well, I want to help you understand how we plan for that, Eric, because there are investment strategies that are covered by something called the Pension Protection Act. That was an act of Congress. And these investment strategies covered by the Pension Protection Act will protect your financial assets from long-term care expense. And there are other tools like the LIRP, which L-I-R-P stands for the Life Insurance Retirement Plan, that actually provide long-term care benefits that can totally fill in this hole in your bucket and protect you from leaking financial assets. So those assets will be preserved for your surviving spouse and your heirs, yet your needs will continue to be met. So the big thing I want you to realize here is you can totally fill in the health care hole in your bucket. And so here's what you should see now as you look at that bucket under the faucet. We had four holes to start with. The first hole was taxes. We totally healed that hole over. The second hole was fees. We still got a little trickle of a leak in that hole. The third hole was market risk. We can heal that over totally, or we might have a little trickle in it. The fourth hole was healthcare cost risk. We can totally heal that hole. Now, at worst, we have a bucket that's just got a little trickle of a hole in the side of it. Now, let's go back and talk about faucets for a moment it's pretty easy to find a faucet that can fill that bucket. And so we don't want to start the investment conversation by looking for the best faucet, because there are a lot of faucets that can work if you've got the right kind of bucket. But if you haven't paid attention to the bucket and you've got all those holes in it, even if you magically selected the best of all faucets, it still will never fill the bucket because of the big holes that you have in it. So at savingyoutaxes.com, we have a proprietary process that helps you to navigate through all of this. It's called the Retirement Tax Roadmap. And in that process, we will calculate the taxes that you'll have to pay over your retirement. And we'll show you how to reduce those taxes usually by about 70%. We'll show you the hidden fees that you're currently paying and how to reduce those. We'll show you and teach you how to eliminate or minimize market risk and how to eliminate long-term health care risks. Ultimately, what we're doing is showing you how to repair the holes in your financial bucket and stop the leaks so that you won't spill the precious money that you've spent a lifetime accumulating and squander the additional years of retirement that that money could have bought for you if you had just been more careful. If you'd like to know more about repairing the holes in your financial bucket and have a retirement tax roadmap prepared for you, call our office and schedule an introductory meeting or phone call. You can find all the information about how to reach us by going to savingyoutaxes.com. I'm Barry Watts here with my co-host, Eric Burleson, and this has been the truth about taxes and retirement. Thank you for listening to the Truth About Taxes and Retirement podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of SavingYouTaxes.com. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for professional tax and investment advice. Always seek the advice of your own qualified advisor with any questions you may have regarding taxes and investing.